guys, it's Aria. In this video, we're going to be going over the oxygen delivery devices. So we're going to go over an introduction of how air enters the body. Then we're going to go over the devices and I'm going to show you some devices, how to connect them and how to use them. So as we all know, we breathe through our mouth and nose. So that's the only way air enters the body, through the mouth and the nose. When you breathe, the air enters in. It goes straight to the trachea, which is the windpipe over here. Then it branches off into two, called the bronchi. One, two. Then it branches off into smaller bronchioles. One, two, like all these little things here. And then the bronchioles end off with the alveoli, which is tiny little ear sacs. All these small little bubbles over here. And as we know, this is the lung, this is the other one, etc. So in the alveoli, these tiny little ear sacs, what's happening is, is that the oxygen you just breathe in, it goes and it leaves and it goes into the blood. Then it circulates around the body to provide the whole body with oxygen. And the carbon dioxide that was building up in your body, it's going to leave from here and go right back up and you're going to exhale. So obviously that process is really quick. You inhale, exhale, you probably don't even notice. You shouldn't even notice that you were doing it. And, but this whole thing is happening meanwhile. So, like, someone could have a problem if the trachea is swollen, the less ear is getting in, and then someone could go with the hypoxemia or hypoxic, etc. If someone ate something and it went, they were talking when they are eating, so the windpipe was open, this pipe was open, that food could have went in and clogged this whole thing. And now they can't breathe because tiny little bit of air is coming through, but not enough at all to get through the whole body. There are also other instances where someone could not be able to breathe. There could be a, um, a clot in the lung, right here. There could be um, all different reasons why someone can't breathe. So, for a normal person, you want their oxygen saturation, when you do the pulse ox, to be at 97% to 100. If someone's 95 to 100, you wouldn't really worry about that. But if they're below 95%, you want to get them on supplemental oxygen. So what that is that you're giving them a little bit more oxygen so they could maintain the 95 to 100% you want them to be at. So here we're going to go through the devices that we need. Okay, so as we see, here are the devices. So let's start from the first one. The nasal cannula. The nasal cannula is, it goes in the nose, around the ear, and then it's connected to the oxygen that usually goes on the wall. What it does is it delivers two to six liters per minute. It's very comfortable because it's just in the nose so the patient could eat, they could talk, they have no problem, they don't feel like um, they're not getting enough breaths because they're breathing through their mouth. It just gives them a little more oxygen. So it's not for someone who's hypoxic, it's for someone who just maybe is setting at 95, 94, you just want to give them a little bit more oxygen. So if this is not working, you have a patient who was sat in a 93, you give them um, four liters of oxygen, let's just say, and it's not really raising that much. So you want to go to the next one, the simple face mask. So this is, as you know, as you could tell, a face mask. It goes exactly what you would think, right around the face, and then it has little strings that tie around. And it's connected to oxygen also. This delivers 5 to 10 liters per minute, so it delivers more than the nasal cannula. And there's little pieces that when the patient exhales, it goes out through there. If you have a patient that's hypoxic, you're not going to go from the nasal cannula and then work your way down. If someone's turning blue and they're hypoxic, you're going to jump to like this or something like that. You're not going to go one, two, three. The nasal cannula is for someone very stable, talking to you, perfect. They just have a little bit lower oxygen, you like to see them a little higher. And the simple mask is for someone that's not working on nasal cannula, but still stable. The non-rebreather is for someone who's um, hypoxic, like severe hypoxic, you know? And, because that's gonna give 10 to 15 liters per minute. What it is, it's also a mask. It comes with, instead of the simple face mask where they could exhale, it has a one-way valve. So nothing from outside is going in. It's attached to a reservoir, a big bag, 
and all that air is being pushed into, you have to inflate it before, and all that air is put going into the patient. No outside expired air, and the patient could only breathe out, not breathe in from the outside air. This, the next one, is a venturi mask. I can't really draw that well, but um, these are kind of like the pieces, they're color coded, and they give, and it has a number on it. That's the precise number of oxygen it's gonna deliver. So someone who needs precise oxygen would be a COPD patient. COPD patient, chronic obstruction pulmonary disorder patient, is they, you don't want them, you do not want them to be setting at 95 to 100%. Because with them, their drive to breathe is from no, is from less oxygen. So it's from hypoxia. So if you're gonna give them oxygen, they're gonna have no drive to breathe. So that's why you wanna give them a precise amount. You don't wanna overventilate them. You don't wanna give them too much. So venturi mass is generally only used for a COPD patient. The next one is a bag valve mask, BMV. What this is, you probably see in the movies like EMS where all of a sudden they come, someone's not breathing and they're pressing it, you know? It's like um, you squeeze the bag and it forces air into the patient's lungs. So it's for someone who is um, not breathing themselves, so you're just forcing air into their lungs. This is for respiratory emergencies. If they're still, if you come and your bag bag masking them and they still don't have it, you're going to put an endotracheal tube down. All these are not long-term options, they're short-term if someone comes hypoxic or someone needs a little more oxygen, like an asthmatic, etc. So just, so in general, with patients with oxygen, um, oxygen dries, it makes the mouth dry, it dries, so you want to give humidified air with it. Maybe not the nasal cannula, because that's a short-term thing, and it's only through the nose anyways, they could breathe through their mouth. But the other ones, you want to give them some um, humidified air so it doesn't dry them out. So now we're going to show you the devices. We're going to show you some devices. I don't have all of them. I'll post pictures and explain you all of them. You can follow me on Instagram, on Facebook. I, um, I'll, I'll post the link below. I post stuff like that as I'm teaching stuff, and show you, etc. So over here, here is an oxygen cylinder. Here, over here is what I like to call tree because it looks like a tree, like a Christmas tree. And here is where it connects and the rest connects, to, the tubing connects to the patient. So a lot of times you'll have the same tree, but it will be connected to the wall and oxygens are connected to the wall. Like in a hospital, you'll have this where um, you're transporting the patient or EMS is bringing the patient, etc. So all your tubing is gonna connect to the oxygen, whether it's the tree over there, over here, it's all gonna connect. So this piece over here is gonna connect to the oxygen. So this is your nasal cannula. It's long tubing. Over here is the nose pieces. It goes into, each one goes into one of the nostrils. It goes in the nostrils, around the ear, and then yikes, in the nostrils, around the ear, and then it gets tied over here, around, like closer to the necks. In the nostrils, around the ear, and then you're going to tie it. Not tie it, but you're just going to make it a little closer so it stays in, and then it goes in the nostrils. And then you're going to, here's the oxygen, shows you, you always want to make sure it's full, because you don't want to be transporting a patient and then it's off. I had that once, I transferred a patient and they didn't realize it was empty and the patient turned blue and we're trying to figure out what happened and then we checked and it was empty. So always make sure it's full or at least half full depending how far you're transferring the patient. And then you're gonna titrate it. So usually it's on the wall, it's gonna say two liters, four liters, six liters, whatever you wanna go to. And the oxygen's going in air, through the nose, etc. So re remember the nasal cannula, the patient could breathe by the mouth, they could eat very comfortably. The next one you're going to have is the simple face mask. I don't have that here, but just imagine something like this without the bag in the bottom. Face mask goes on, exhale through there. This goes around them, goes on the mask, etc. Very simple. So this is an on rebreather. We see there's a bag over here. 
It's called a reservoir. You're going to fill it up with air first. Then, you see over here, there's little ports. You're going to close it. See, it's closed over here. And then, when the patient, it's a one-way valve. So, air is not coming in from outside. So, this bag is going to go like this. It's going to go around the head. You're going to attach it just like you attached the other one. It will come with this. Attached to the tree. And you're going to put it up on... 10 to 15 liters of per minute. So those are the masks. The Venturi mask is the same thing. It just comes with, instead of this, it comes with little color ports and you put in the colors based on the numbers. So remember, follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll post that. Then the last thing I wanna show you is this again, connects to the tree over here. So this, like we said before, oxygen um, is dry. So this is some way you put in water through here. Here, it's also used to give medication through it. So you could give albuterol is usually almost always given through this. This is called a nebulizer. So let's say this was albuterol. It's not, but it's saline. You could also put saline in. You're gonna open it. You're going to pour your saline or albuterol in it. You're going to close it. And you're going to attach this to the device. So, so let's say this was not a non rebreather You would have a simple face mask. This would go straight on here. So pretend the bag doesn't go straight on there. You turn off action, it will mist, and it will go right in. This could be connected to tons of different devices. Um, Usually it's used with a simple face mask, if you use it with um, a lot of different stuff and you put it in, the, either the water or the albuterol or whatever medication you're giving, it's going to go mist up, go right by the tube, etc. So that's pretty much the end of it. Let me know if you want any other video and maybe soon I'll make a video on long term oxygen therapy like CPAP, BiPAP, all those stuff. Um, ET tube, all the ventilation settings, etc. So stay tuned and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.